That's not going in the video. Hey everybody, welcome to Thankful Thursday. It's November 19th, and the first thing I'm thankful for is my wife making dinner, because I got home super late from work, and dinner was tasty, so that's a double bonus. Taking off the socks, let's get comfortable. Brief interlude while I had to go get Liam to finally fall asleep, he was a little overtired, and that's just the worst. It's the worst when you know they need to sleep. You know they just need to relax and give in, but they just fight like falling asleep is the worst thing possible. And of course, when you're only seven weeks old, that might be the worst thing you've ever had. <sighs> So another thing that happened last night was I finished reading another book. Uh, it was called What's the Matter with Kansas by Thomas Frank. It was all about how the conservative movement took hold in Kansas and kind of how that played itself out. It's the 18th book I've finished this year. I have a goal every year of doing 24 books, at least two books a month. And it always ends up this way. It's always really close to the end of the year and I've got like a handful left to go to meet my quota. It's usually because during the year I jump around in different books. So I've got like, you know, five or six or 10 books that are like a certain portion of the way through. And now I just need to kind of grab hold and plow my way through the rest of them. And hopefully I'll make my goal. We'll see. Whatever does end up happening, I'll put the list of all the books that I've actually read during the year at the the beginning of the new year. So today's Thankful Thursday video is kind of mixing in my passion for politics as well because what I am thankful for today, actually let me take a step back. Decades and decades ago, this country was faced with a whole new level of fear. There was a madman on the rise in Europe coming out of Germany and he had just allied himself with Japan and World War II was in full swing. Now the US had a lot to be afraid of. We had just been attacked in Pearl Harbor. We knew Japan was coming after us. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have gotten into the war. We did for a whole bunch of different reasons. And obviously one of them being someone had to stop Hitler and not that we did it all on our own. We came in and we were definitely the big straw that broke the camel's back. But during that time period, before the war was over, that fear, that paranoia that got created about the other, about fighting the German and the Japanese, led this country to do something incredibly horrible. And that was build internment camps on American soil and fill them with American citizens. We rounded up all the Japanese that we could find and put them into these camps. And this wasn't summer camp. And we jailed everybody up because we just didn't trust anybody who was Japanese because we were at war with Japan. Now, decades later, the government finally gets around to actually issuing a proclamation apologizing for doing such a horrendous thing, a short-sighted and awful act based purely out of fear and not fact. And then you get to today and we're talking about something so incredibly similar that it makes me nauseous. For all the governors out there and all the politicians and the senators who are thinking it's a good idea right now to close the doors to Syrian refugees because they could possibly be jihadists. They could possibly be part of ISIS. And all of this, of course, being queued off by the attacks in Paris. But here's the biggest problem with that. If you're going to say, we can't trust anyone who was like those people who pulled off the attacks in Paris, it is because of the attacks in Paris and they were jihadists and ISIS has taken taken credit for those attacks, then anyone who is like them, we can't trust. We can't possibly vet them. If you even follow that logic, then it is not Syrian refugees that we need to be blocking. According to top officials in Paris and in the EU, so far, everyone who has been identified as part of the Paris attacks were EU nationals. These were French and Belgian-born citizens. So following that logic, we need to ban or round up everybody from France and Belgium, not from Syria. Now obviously Syria is where ISIS has a big stronghold and that's where they're pushing really hard to gain control of that whole country. But there is no direct correlation between a Syrian and an ISIS fighter. Just because many ISIS fighters happen to be Syrian or happen to be from that area does not mean everybody is. And those governors, those politicians are saying that we should close the doors, that we should possibly get back to an era where we do something like we did back in World War II to the Japanese Americans, shame on you. And that specifically includes Mayor David Bowers of Roanoke, Virginia, who actually specifically mentioned the internment camps as part of his justification for blocking Syrian refugees. He actually took that horrible piece of history. He took images like this and said, yes, that is a good thing that happened. We did it because we needed to be safe and we should do something similar now. If it's not put camps together, it's block them from coming in and sending them back to ISIS. Do you know what happens to Syrian refugees who go back 
back to ISIS, they get killed. ISIS doesn't actually want them running. ISIS is not trying to push people out of the country. They actually consider it a grave sin, worthy of death, to leave the homeland. And everyone's becoming so blinded by this fear. You've got people like Mike Huckabee, who's making statements saying, you know what, it's always Muslims, it's always Syrians, and he can't think of any terrorists in recent memory who possibly hurt innocents that weren't Muslim. Does he forget about this guy, Dylan Roof, who killed nine people in cold blood inside of a church? He's a white guy, and he did it because he hated black people. In fact, the number of people who have been killed on U.S. soil is higher for domestic terrorists, for people who are fighting for either white pride or a certain religious preference that are not Muslim. But you'll never hear someone saying we need to round up all of those people because it can't be done and it's a stupid response. And to those people who say we should be more like France because look at what happened after France got attacked. The day after or two days after Paris was attacked, they sent jets down to Syria and they bombed the hell out of what they think is an ISIS stronghold. There were a number of sorties run, 20 bombs were dropped that day and they continued to do it day after day. But here's something people should realize is that while that did happen, the US has been involved in that as well. Even Russia is involved in that as well. There's bombing going on all over Syria and it was happening before the Paris attacks. So it's not like France is the first people to come along and say we should send bombs over there. The problem is it's making a minimal effect. While ISIS is losing ground in certain key areas, what we're trying to do doesn't actually work because you can't bomb an idea. You can't bomb a way of life. And that's what it is to these people. These fighters in ISIS, they can go to any country. And in fact, going right back to the Paris attacks, these were all, again, nationals. These were French and Belgian citizens. They were not Syrians, and they were not people who were brought up in that world. These were people who were raised in Europe, and they were radicalized online or through various other methods. And once you understand that fact, you see the fallacy of trying to block an entire race of people, because this is no longer about a race of people. This is not an ethnicity. This is an idea. And anyone can have a bad idea. So, getting back to what I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for those people in positions of power who were ignoring that fear, who are seeing through that haze of hatred and paranoia and doing the right thing. I'm thankful for the fact that while we say we should be more like France because France sent jets over and bombed the hell out of that city, France actually, just days after the Paris attacks, said, you know what, we're not only not going to refuse Syrian refugees, we're going to take in more. President Olan actually increased his commitment from 24,000 in September to 30,000 Syrian refugees. And when you talk about what we're taking in, the people that we're trying to stop from coming into the country, we're barely taking 10,000. That was our limit. Do you know how many people have actually run from Syria? Four million. Let's not get into this idea that we're taking everyone from Syria and bringing them here. We are taking a fraction of a fraction. And then I'm thankful for those people who are here, like Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton, who called out all those other governors and says, I think it's show on the part of the governors. I want to protect the people of Minnesota every bit as much as those governors want to protect the people of their states. To stand up there with swagger and say, I'm going to prevent the wrong people from entering my state, to me is just ludicrous. And there's Oregon Governor Kate Brown, who said on Twitter, clearly Oregon will continue to accept refugees. They seek safe haven and we will continue to open the doors of opportunity to them. The words on the Statue of Liberty apply in Oregon just as they do in every other state. Senator Elizabeth Warren, who did a 12 minute speech on the floor of the Senate and at one point said this, we are not a nation that delivers children back into the hands of ISIS murderers. It is easy to proclaim that we are tough and brave and good-hearted when threats feel far away, but when those threats loom large and close by, our actions will strip away our tough talk and reveal who we really are. Washington Governor Jay Inslee, who said this, I live on Bainbridge Island, this little island just west of Seattle, and it was the first place where we succumbed to fear in 1941 after Pearl Harbor, and we locked up Washington and American citizens, and we sent them to camps for years while their sons fought in the army in Italy and were decorated fighting for democracy. We regret that. We regret that we succumbed to fear. We regret that we lost moorage for who we were as a country. We shouldn't do that right now. And then, of course, at the top of the list, I'm thankful for President Obama, who called out those people, those governors who say we should stop bringing in Syrian refugees. And while you might think he did it in a childish way, he's making a good point. When he said this, apparently they are scared of widows and orphans coming into the United States of America. At first, they were too scared of the press being too tough on them in the debates. Now they're scared of three-year-old orphans. That doesn't seem so tough to me. If he had a microphone with the seal of the presidency on it,
dropped. So that's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for people with a heart. I'm thankful for people with common sense who don't panic in the face of fear because that's exactly what ISIS wants. When you look at what they're looking to get out of us, blocking Syrian refugees from coming in, turning a blind eye to their suffering, closing the door in their face is exactly what they want because they have painted us as the devil. They have painted us as people who hate them, who hate anyone who looks like them because of purely who they are as people not because we know them, but just because they are Syrian, because they are Middle Eastern, because they are Muslim. And when we block them, when we close that door to them, we are proving ISIS right. That we think of them all as the same and nothing more than terrorists. And all that's going to do is create more terrorists. So there's my rant for today. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. What would you do if you were a governor or a mayor or anybody in position of power right now? How would you go about this? Would you close the doors? Would you leave the doors open? And how would you communicate with with your citizens that wanted something different. Stay tuned for tomorrow and as always, be good to each other.